Mr Agnew. Right, Chairman, first I want to start with a complaint. Uh, Mrs Le Grip registered to speak, and immediately after she did, I went like that, and there was a nod from over there. I assumed it had been acknowledged. I was therefore surprised not to be called to speak after Mrs Le Grip, and so I did this again, and again there was a nod. I was a little bit suspicious, so I walked around there and had a look at the list, and I wasn't even on the batting order at all. Now, some of the MEPs in here, if they're real Europhiles, they only have to do that casually. They're on the list to speak. Now, I know you would, are not happy with what I say in here, but I have an elected right to say it, and I don't like this treatment. Right, I'm from UKIP, and we have always been against the whole concept of having two seats in the European no, no, Parliament. No, no, no. Le assicuro che desidero dare a lei la parola come a I, I, do, I assure you, Mr Agnew, that I took your name and called you to speak in exactly the same way as other colleagues. And I do intend to get through the, the list. Now, although we have always been against, since our inception 20 years ago as a political party, against this concept of two seats, it's interesting to see Conservatives, Liberal Democrats, suddenly jumping onto this bandwagon as well. Anyway, we welcome them to the party. We can be forgiven for suspecting that their newfound distaste for the monthly pilgrimage to Strasbourg has everything to do with the increasing unpopularity amongst ordinary voters of the European Union, of which the Strasbourg nonsense is so graphic an icon of waste and hubris. The probability is that we are all wasting our time here. And in case you hadn't noticed, there is an economic crisis in Europe. We just heard about the one in Greece. France is one of those member states currently prostrated by a collapsing economy. France has fallen far. It will be years while she makes up the ground lost by the failures of its current government. And it would be political death at any time for a French leader to damage his own economy by going along with the recommendations of other member states to, to, to lose their seat in Strasbourg. The economy of Strasbourg is kept afloat on this mon monthly pilgrimage. Why is it in the interest of the French to give that up? Meanwhile, of course, that building sits there not being used most of the time. And, of course, who is consistently voting against this change? It's the French MEPs and the Luxembourg MEPs. And we've just heard Mrs. Le Grip speak, and, and she was defending the amount of carbon, the weight of carbon produced by going to Strasbourg. If you're really worried about emitting hot air, don't have politicians in the first place. Both these countries do well out of this, and, of course, they're not going to give it up. Now... Parliament can go the full distance and use Article 48 to change these treaties. However, it still requires Article 48.5, which is a ratification by all member states. Will Luxembourg and France do this? I very much doubt it. But I'm surprised to see the British Conservatives wanting to use Article 48. Of all the flaws in the Treaty of Lisbon, Article 48 attracted some of the heaviest criticism at the time of its passage through our Parliament. In the UK, it's seen as a provision that enables national governments and national parliaments to be sidelined by the European Parliament in matters of treaty revision. Now, the, the Treaty of Lisbon may have technical legitimacy, but let's just remember how it was signed by our British Prime Minister. He wouldn't come here with all the rest of them to be photographed doing it. No, he slipped shadily across the channel a few days later and tried to do it without anyone noticing. So we're surprised to see Conservatives wanting to use Article 48 in this way. And let's put it round the other way. Supposing French MEPs wanted to damage the economy of Eastern England and wanted to use it by Article 48, they could use the precedent, couldn't they? Don't let's go there. I think this whole thing is a lost cause within the lost cause of the European Union. Thank you.